everyone welcome back to my channel so today i wanted to show you uh, talk all about winter sewing and show you step by step on how to uh, winter sew um, and uh, talk about the seeds that i am winter sewing and um, really take you through the process step by step so first to begin with i wanted to talk about what winter sewing is so winter sewing is really um basically putting your seeds out in the winter in the natural environment um, and then letting them grow uh, with the weather change as the weather warms up um, and it's spring uh, the seeds will start to germinate and and they will go through the natural uh, cycle um, that happens outdoors and uh, some of the reasons why you would want to winter sow is uh, because it's easy it's easy it doesn't occupy space in your house you don't have to worry about where you're going to um, actually put those seeds and, and what you're going to do with them uh, and take care of them uh, you're just going to literally just put them um, uh, outside and forget about it till spring uh, and, and then uh, you can just kind of tend to them outdoors and, and pot plant them wherever you want in your landscape. Um, the other reason is that uh, winter sowing, um, you know, anything that you grow by winter sowing is naturally uh, hardened off and it's stronger. Uh, so you don't have to go through the hardening process of taking your seeds indoors and outdoors and, and um, go through that uh, process. So I think in that way, it's easier. You don't have to uh, deal with that. You can just leave your seeds outside and all you have to make sure that they have some water um, and uh, you are kind of taking care of their needs a little bit outdoors. Um, and the other benefit is that, um, you know, there are many, many seeds that you can winter sow and you can start early on in January uh, when you are kind of um, really uh, wanting to do something in the garden and it's kind of a nice way to be doing something for your garden and sowing seeds for things to come in spring and summer. So I think it's a good way to, to kind of uh, go through that process. So I just wanted to show you uh, some of the seeds that I am going to be winter sowing. So the first seed that I'm going to be winter sowing is a dill so i the reason i am going to sow this one is because i love the way the dill blooms look and i want to try them out in my landscape how they will look so i will winter sow this and there are many vegetables like cold um hardy vegetables that you can winter sow like broccoli and uh, cabbage and any of the greens like kale spinach and uh, swiss chard um, I would not winter sow tomatoes and peppers because they are hot weather uh, vegetables, but you could uh, sow a bunch of vegetables and I might do that um, a little bit later. I haven't really put thought into what I want in my veg garden this year. So once I decide that I will try it, but for this year, I'm really only going to focus on some flowers and perennials and, uh, and see how this process works out. So the next seed that I'm going to winter sow is the is this poppy. So this is the uh, Iceland mixed colors poppy. Isn't it beautiful? It has a lot of like uh, reds, oranges, and whites uh, and yellows. Um, so again, um, any of your perennials that uh, require cold stratification would be ideal or any other perennials you have growing out in your garden would also be ideal to winter sow. Uh, the next seed that I am going to winter sow is a delphinium. So this is the Pacific Giants mix. Um, really like this one. Uh, I, you know, love the colors. It has a mix of like uh, lavender, uh, dark purple and whites. It's really excited. Um, these can grow really, really tall. And th these also require a chill period. So this is perfect as well to, to winter sow. And then the next one that I will try is this uh, Gloria, Gloriosa Daisy. So this is kind of like the Black Eyed Susan almost. So this has a mix of colors. It has autumnal colors. It has uh, a bit of mahogany. It has uh, yellows and oranges. So I'm excited to grow this one as well. I love the vibrant colors that yellows and, and all these earthy colors bring in the garden. Um, the other one that I'm going to winter sow is this foxglove. This one is called an excelsior hybrid. So this one has a 
bunch of colors as well it has whites it has light pink and it has dark pink so really excited to plant this as well and uh fox club is a biennial so it may not flower for me this year but i'm okay with that i will uh, create a few plants and place them in my garden and um, if they bloom this year that's okay if not it will bloom next year and this is another seed that i will this is an annual it's a larkspur but this is also something i wanted to try through winter sowing so this one is a mixed color um, and what i've been meaning to try larkspur for a while and and i kind of got my hands on these seeds and i want to give it a try this comes in a variety of colors and i love how the flowers are these tall spikes and it's got a range of colors from light pink to lavender to dark purple to uh, there's a little magenta and then there's white so really excited about this one as well uh, so yeah so those are all the seeds that i have in packets but then there were also seeds that i collected from my garden and i'll post you post a link to that video where i was doing a walk about and collecting these seeds so i have coneflower mixed seeds which i will also be planting so these are also ideal to winter so because in nature that's what they would be doing so this is a good um, one that i still want to add some more coneflowers to my garden and i want to grow from my own coneflowers i added a bunch of coneflowers and i'll also add a link to that uh, in my garden last year and they are this beautiful mix of colors they are oranges pinks and purples and i really really want more of those in my garden and the other seed that i will be adding is uh, this bleeding heart sunflower so this is a false sunflower it is beautiful it's um got a dark foliage to it and it's got an orangey yellow flower uh, and so I want to add, I have a, one plant in my garden and I collected some seeds. So I kind of want to have more of these in my garden. So I'm excited to also winter sow these. And then the last one that I will winter sow is Black Eyed Susan. So um, I will add a few more plants to my garden uh, to fill some spaces if needed. And so um, this is another seed that I will winter sow. So I have a lot of seeds here and I will kind of show you next um, what uh, equipment kind of tools and equipment you're going to need to winter sow. So let me talk about that next and I'll show you step by step then how to winter sow these seeds. Next I'm going to show you all the things you're going to need uh, to do your winter sowing and uh, make sure you have this ready before you start the process. That way you kind of have an assembly line going and you can um, so all of your seeds all at once and um, ha have it all done in, in one go. So um, the most important thing that uh, you have to collect is containers that you will be doing your winter sowing in. So uh, what I do is around fall time, I will start to kind of save some of the containers um, from my recycling bin. So I use a lot of this distilled water for something in my house. So these are ideal containers to store. Um, they are quite uh, big as you can see and they are tall. So the, this would make an ideal container. Uh, you can alternatively also keep these juice boxes. So these are also pretty good. They are tall and um, really, really uh, good containers. And the other thing that you can also use are these salad containers or takeout containers so these are also some things you can save and winter sow in so i will be using all three of these today and um, if you live in a place where you get milk jugs you can save those as well in canada we don't have milk jugs so uh, otherwise those are ideal as well to do winter sowing in so um the other thing that you're going to need is uh a, a potting soil for winter sowing so what you will not be using for winter sowing is seed uh, starting mix because what you're trying to do is mimic the condition that the seeds would uh, be in if they were just left outside or if they just scattered out on their own so you're going to be using a potting mix so i've used I have a, just a regular potting mix um, that I will be using. And what is an important step in winter sowing is to pre-moisture the soil. So have a can of water ready uh, so that you can get the soil nicely moistened before you fill the containers. The other thing you're going to need, very important, is, is something to label the plants. So I have these stakes that I have 
already like pre-written on them the name of the flowers that I was going to winter sow because I've already planned the ones that I am going to winter sow that I shared with you and I have written them all on the on these stakes with the date that I am winter sowing. Uh, very important because you don't want to mix up your seeds um, and when plants first start up they all start to look the same so it's hard to distinguish but once they start getting their true set of leaves then you may be able to tell which ones they are and you don't want to go through that process of confusion so so make sure you label them the other thing you're going to need is some something to cut these jars so either a box cutter or you can use a knife whatever you're comfortable with and then you're also going to need some sort of a tape to seal these jars. So you can use a masking tape, you can use a clear masking tape. So whatever you have, uh, I'm just using a duct tape, uh, something that will seal it shut really tight. So this is what I'm going to be using and a pair of scissors to cut the tape. So that is all the equipment you are going to be needing. Um, so next I will show you how to prepare the container to do the winter sewing and take you through all the steps. So what I've already done is I've prepared all of my containers already, except one so that I can show you step-by-step step how to do it. So that's what I've already done. So I just want you to know that I have kind of done this to the rest of the containers. And, and now I'm going to kind of show you step-by-step step on how to prepare this container. To prepare the container for winter sewing, first thing you will do is remove any of the labels that are on uh, this container. So you don't want any of these um, labels to, to kind of be on this, on this container. So I will be just removing this label uh, from this container um, and so that it is bare. The next thing to do is to make sure that the containers are rinsed out and clean. And I've done that to all of these especially the juice ones because you do not want anything um, inside your container the water ones are 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 okay because they just had water in it but regardless they have been sitting around for a while so i have rinsed them as well and uh, that's what you should do um, so sometimes the labels are hard to remove and you may have to like wash them and uh, and rinse them and put some soap on it um, but for most part they are not so bad like I I found the distilled water was really easy to kind of remove so the next thing what we're going to do is create some drain holes at the bottom of the container so just take your your cutter and just kind of make some some kind of holes in there this is a very important step and do not forget to do this step because you do not want water to be sitting in these containers um, and make sure that you have a few holes at the bottom um, of this container i mean it's it's easier to do it on this one the juice box i found was a little juice container was a little bit thicker and was harder to to kind of make holes in but uh, this one is fairly easy so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this container in half, um, leaving a little bit in the back so that I kind of create a hinge on this container. So, so what I'm going to do is not going to go exactly half and half, but I'm going to go like this, this uh, length and then leave the rest of this as a dome that sits on top because the plants will get taller um, and this much soil is going to be enough for the seeds. So what I'm going to do is cut this container in in half and and don't forget to leave a little bit um, of it so that it kind of uh, is more like a hinge uh, as opposed to cut all the way through and don't worry if it's not too perfect or if you're not going completely um, straight it's not a big deal you're going to just um, seal these and uh, it really doesn't matter so, so most of this is cut and as you can see I've kind of created a hinge here and that allows me to close it and what we are going to ultimately do is put tape around this so it's fine you can cut it this way and uh, so that is step one preparing your container for winter sewing so the next step I'm going to show you is what do you do with the soil? So the soil is 
literally uh the potting soil as i told as i told you and it can be a little bit hard to find soil at this time of the year i went to the garden center and a lot of their soil was frozen it was outdoors so it was a little bit of a challenge but i did find some and uh, and then what happened is i left it in my car and it was frozen in my car so i had to wait a whole day for it to thaw again so i went through a little bit of a uh, circle with the soil but for now it's ready so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add water to this and i'm going to mix it and make sure that um, the soil is nicely moistened so that is a very important step because you are not going to really be watering this a lot you want the soil to be nice and moist um, before you place it in the container and you really work in that water um, and make sure it's nice and wet. You don't want it to be soggy, but you want it to be wet. And if you do end up adding a lot of water, just add a little bit of more soil. This is not like supposed to be any kind of perfection, but you just want to make sure that there is enough moisture in here to get the seed off to a good start. And that's all you're trying to do here. Um, so this soil is looking pretty good. Um, but I think it might need a little bit more water. Um, especially at this time of the year, the soil can feel a little bit dry. Um, so you wanna make sure that it has enough moisture in it. Just add a little bit more to it. And then I'm just going to mix it all the way. Um, make sure it's nice and moist. And you will make a mess, but that's okay. And which is why I like to have everything organized so that I can get it all done in one go and clean up the mess after. <laughs> so this is fun. So now that the soil is nice and moist, what you will do is fill up your container. So I'm gonna take a container, take this container, and I'm going to fill it. So don't forget this part of moistening the soil. That's really important. So you're going to literally just fill it in like you would for a pot. And it will have to be all the way, all the way where you have um, cut. So mostly up to that line is what I will be doing. this so you can see I hope you're able to see what I'm doing um, so yeah I'm just going to pack this in and I could add a little bit more as well if I wanted you can see All right. All right, so this is now full of soil and it's quite moist. And so the next step will be to add the seeds to this. So you can, you can kind of decide how many seeds you wanna add. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a few holes in here, maybe about like five holes. Um, and, and really, uh, making sure mostly on the edges so I'm going to make about five holes in here and that's where I'm going to plant and one recommendation I would give you is do not over plant the seeds because what's going to happen is it's going to be too crowded in there and um, if you do get a successful germination which I think with winter sowing it would be quite um, uh, you would have a great success. So um, do not overdo it. So I'm going to start with the delphinium seeds and I'll show you. Um, so you just take some seeds in your hands um, and we're going to put them in. So this packet doesn't have a lot of seeds. So I'm going to probably use all of these in this uh, sowing. So just do not plant them too deep. So um, typically you, you plant seeds... Um, uh, 
the same depth as the size of the seeds so that's a general rule to kind of um, really be careful with and uh, and use uh, if otherwise uh, there's always instructions on the packet that tell you how deep the seed should be um, so you should just kind of follow that and make sure that they are not planted too deep so I'm just going to do that and uh, I still have a few left so I'm going to actually put those back in the packet I mean I don't have to plant all of these and I'm just lightly patting the seeds seeds down so that they have some contact with the soil um, and so that's it so I'm going to put the rest of them back in the packet and uh, not overdo it um, and then the next thing would be to kind of uh, put the label I'm going to find the label that I created for this um, here it is I'm going to include it in here and then what I'm going to do is the next step is to shut it close so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a napkin and wipe down the bottle a little bit before I start taping it um, and then uh, you can kind of wipe it clean you it is a little bit of a messy process so it's good to have things ready with you um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape tape this opening um, and uh, what I do generally is I start with a little piece of tape to just close the lid a bit so that it doesn't move. So you don't need a, such a big one, actually. You could just use a smaller one um, and just kind of put it around here so that it doesn't move as you're taping. Um, and then you can put the tape all around this and uh, start taping. Um, so there we go and this part can be like I said you can use a clear tape if you have it I do not have a clear tape so I'm just using this tape and the seeds will get plenty of light from the top so I'm not really worried about this tape blocking any light um, it's going to be fine so what you're trying to do in here is you're kind of simulating a greenhouse um, kind of environment for the seeds so that there's condensation and then there is they stay a bit warmer but they are also going to be exposed to the elements outside so so this is now kind of sealed shut as you can see um, and uh, this this container is ready to go outside all you have to do is lose the lid you don't need the lid so that there is air inside and that's pretty much it i don't have to water this because there's already water in it um, and it's ready to go so this container is ready so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to get all of my containers ready and i'll show you when i'm done when i'm done and where i'm going to be placing them outdoors so um I'm going to kind of go through this and I will show you when I'm done. So as you can see, I am done uh, planting all my seeds for winter sowing and the containers are ready to go outside into the natural elements. And I will show you when I take them outside and where I place them. Um, and uh, yeah, everything is sealed uh, with the tape and uh, make sure you take the lids off because you want the air to flow and also um, that it gets water from the snow or rain and, it, and, and the plants are hydrated. The only other thing I did was I added um, in this salad container, I ended up putting in some zinnia seeds uh, instead of uh, Black Eyed Susan because I wanted to also try these zinnia seeds. So these are the California Giant Mixed Zinnias. I absolutely love zinnias. And this is like one of my most favorite um, garden flower. It's an annual, but I love growing it every year. So I am uh, winter sowing those as well, and I'll try them out. And what I did was I actually found another container uh, that had kiwis in it um, and I put my black eyed Susan in this container. And as you can see, I've also taped this 
what I liked about this container was it had holes already in it, like on top and in the drain holes in the bottom. So I didn't really have to do much with it. And I might save the other one that I have and maybe I, I might plant uh, spinach or some other vegetable in it uh, or another flower. So these are really good if you have them. You can also use these. Um, and yeah, so everything is ready to go outside and I am really excited to to see what happens um, and uh, literally uh, follow through and see what happens. I, I think for now, I will just leave them outside and forget about them till March and uh, early April and see what's happening, if there's any activity in it and just keep it monitored for moisture. And I think for moisture, they will be okay because we do get a lot of rain, uh, sorry, snow and uh, then rain in March, April. So I think they will be okay. So yeah, I'm really excited to share this process with you. I hope uh, you guys will try this process and uh, let me know if you have tried it and if you do this all the time, uh, what do you love about it? I would love to hear from you and any tips and tricks for the viewers or me would be really, really good. And I hope you found this video really useful and we'll try this technique um, on something that you've been wanting to grow. And it's so nice to see something um, start from a seed and and flower by the uh time the summer season goes on so it's really really rewarding and exciting and i'm really excited to start this journey now and uh, follow this through uh, the season so uh, i will take these outside and i will show you where i'm placing them and then uh, that would be the final step in this video here it is i wanted to show you uh, that i've placed these containers outside just on one side of my shed where we get a lot of south facing sun so the plants need a lot of these seeds will need a lot of sun um, and what I did was I kind of put some logs around it just because if we get stormy weather and there's a lot of wind I don't want these plants these containers to just move and fall all over the place and then it's going to um, really disrupt the entire process so that's one thing I will have to constantly keep an eye on, make sure that the containers are straight. Um, and uh, if it becomes a problem, then I might actually think of moving them somewhere else. But I think for now, they're quite snuggled in with uh, these logs and um, I think they will be okay here. The other thing you can keep an eye on is any critters getting to them. Uh, they should be okay, but just keep an eye on it. and. Like I said, I'm not really concerned about moisture level here because we do get a lot of snow and rain, so it's going to be okay. So I just I wanted to show you what this finally looks like and I'm going to now just leave it and forget it um, till about March, April, I think March end, and um, just start to kind of notice what it's doing in March and April. And then uh, if I need to open uh, anything up, I will, but not until May because um, we do get a lot of uh, frost. Our last frost date is until sometime in mid-May to late May. So it's still a long ways to go, but I feel really good about starting these. Uh, I feel like I'm doing something kind of um, uh, from dream to seed now and then we'll see uh, what happens next and, and into flowers in the summer. So really excited to put these in the ground, not in the ground, literally in the ground, but in their containers and little greenhouses. And I'm hoping that this is successful. I have not tried this method before, but I wanted to really try it. And also because I do not have a greenhouse, I do not have a lot of space inside to start these and because I have a lot of indoor plants so it's this is a perfect solution for me and I'm excited to try this and I'm hoping this is a big success and I will keep you all posted on how this goes so I hope everyone who's joining me is having a fabulous day and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe so that I can um, get to you any updates that i have on these plants and anything else i'm doing in my garden i'm really excited to have all of you on my channel and i really feel grateful to share uh, this gardening joy and uh, with my gardening community i hope everyone has a fabulous day thanks so much for watching this video